I have another budget bushcraft knife I want to share with you today. Today it is the Haltafors OK4. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this knife, keep watching. Before we get started, I just want to thank Gary at Boreal Adventures for helping me out with this knife. Now, what I mean by that is I did purchase this knife, but Gary threw in a, an accessory that you can purchase for this knife free of charge. So I thank you, Gary, for that. I'll show you what that accessory is in a minute. Now, the reason I have this knife. So not so long ago, I did a review of the Haltafors Craftsman, something I purchased at that time. I think it was $10.99, that is Canadian dollars, and declared it probably the very best budget bushcraft knife that you could purchase, especially at $10 or $11, whatever it was I paid for it. I will put a link to that review at the end of this one if you want to uh, see that. I do have that knife with me today so I can compare it with this knife. At the end of that video, I opened it up to you, my viewers, to suggest a few other knives that you might want me to see if I can get a, my hands on to review. And one of them was the Haltafors Heavy Duty GK that I just reviewed not so long ago. I have that with me again today to compare to this knife. And this was the other most requested knife, and the uh, Haltafors OK4. And uh, yeah, so what we'll do is I'll bring the camera in a little closer, we'll go over the specifications for this knife, as well as the sheath and a few of the design features, and then we'll do some demonstrations. So of course, we'll take a look at the sheath first, and then we'll come back to the knife. Just let me take the knife out of the sheath, put that aside. So very much like all the other Haltafors knife, polypropylene, plastic, sheath, very simple, very much the same. In fact, the Craftsman will fit right in this sheath that they'll show you. But the upgrade here is that it has a nylon belt loop, which is attached to the sheath using that button, uh, what do they call it, the buttonhole loop on the back of it. So you don't have to depend on the built-in belt loop on it, which is not all that functional, to be honest. So it just kind of works as a holder for the sheath itself. Now, here is the upgrade that Gary sent me again. Thank you, Gary. It is this fire steel, this ferrocerium rod. So this is sold by Haltafors to go with this knife or to buy and use separately, of course. And uh, yeah, so it's just a nice upgrade uh, that to have with this uh, knife and sheath. Okay, we're going to take the sheath and lay it aside. We will come back to it in a few minutes time. So let's go over the specifications for this knife. So the overall length of this knife is 8.23 inches, 209 millimeters. Blade length, 3.66 inches, which is 93 millimeters. Blade thickness is 0.12 inches, which is 3 millimeters. It is made from Japanese high carbon steel rated at 60 on the Rockwell scale. Now, it has a few things and upgrades over the other knives, which I'll do some comparisons with, but right off of the top, there is a black electrophoretic deposition. Right? Okay, that's a long one. Black EPD coating, electrophoretic deposition. That's what it's the long term for that is. So that's one of the upgrades on it. I'll go into more in a minute. It does come in at 3.8 ounces or 109 grams in the plastic or the handle is made of the polypropylene plastic, but it has a centuprene overmold on it. So very grippy rubber on the outside of it. That actually is a huge improvement to the texture of the smooth plastic that the other two knives that I reviewed has. It does have a hidden tang and the information here is that it will extend 3.23 inches or 82 millimeters into the handle. That's a long ways in. That's most of the way back. So it doesn't have a full exposed tang like survival knives do. But for a bushcraft knife, this is plenty, plenty strong. Another one of the upgrades is they actually took the time to finish the spine off and make it a true 90 degrees. And you can feel the difference, and we'll demonstrate that in a few moments' time. Yeah, much nicer there as well. A few of the other things on top of the coating on the outside is, I don't know how useful it is, but it might be. And that is there are some measurements here in uh, 2 inches and the... What is that? 50 centimeters, I think it is. Uh, so if you need some measurements, then you have them on either side of the blade. Scandinavian grind with a micro bevel. Now, here's what's cool. You can probably see, because of the black coating, just how little that or small that micro bevel is. So it's almost a true full zero grind, but it does have the micro bevel, which will greatly improve the edge strength. 
and do very, very little to the performance of this. As you see, it will bite in tremendously. All right, I'm just going to pull the camera back a little bit so that we can take a look at this knife in comparison with the first two that I reviewed. So once again, this is the Hultifors OK4 knife and more of a purpose-built bushcraft knife with improvements or upgrades over the crafting series, the working series knife. And, and I need to tell you, it is reflected in the price, whereas the other two range between $12 and $16. This one is going for $40 right now. So is it worth those upgrades? Well, that's something you're going to have to decide. Some of the upgrades you can do yourself in terms of sharpening the spine up, putting a, a, a texture on it. Well, I'll show you what I did with the GK in a moment's time. But let's first, let's bring in the original. This is the one that started this trend in uh, knife reviews off. This is the Hultifors Craftsman. A diminutive little knife, small enough that I can carry as a neck sheath, but still capable of virtually all of the bushcraft tasks. Good little knife. And little is the operative word here. It is small, for my hand. Remember, I do have an XL hand, but maybe most people won't find it too small. But considering what tasks I use this knife for, it's not all that bad. It does have that smooth, slightly textured polypropylene plastic handle, but and it works okay in the small knife. And the next one I'll show you, the GK, it didn't work so well because the knife handle was considerably larger. But here's what I want to do to start with. First, let's go take a look at the blades in comparison. So what you can see is although the blade length is virtually the same, the blade width from the spine to the edge is different. So it is a much thicker knife for the OK4. And that's more in, uh, in line with what we want from our bushcraft knives, something that is still very capable, but has the strength to do at least some batoning as well. But when it comes to the handle, they are pretty much the same. How am I going to demonstrate that? Put the edge to edge. Let's see. Does that show it? All right. So the handles are, all, are identical, virtually identical, with the exception, of course, that the OK4 has that Santa Prime grit on the outside, which greatly, greatly aids in hand traction. OK, that was the Craftsman. Let's bring in the GK. So here's the second knife that I reviewed from Hultifors. This is the Hultifors Heavy Duty GK. That's the way it's referred to. Much, much bigger knife in every dimension than it is the Craftsman, but still it's in that working line of knives. I really like this knife because the size of the handle is much more fitting to my hand, my extra large hand. Anybody, I said it before, anybody with larger hands, this is the one you want to gravitate to. Now, the only downside to it, of course, is that the handle was quite slippery. So this is, as I mentioned before, the self-adherent silicone tape. It's the type of tape that you might use for repairing leaky faucets or wrapping around your handles to get some traction on. Work perfectly for use with this knife. Okay, first thing I want to show in comparison is the blade. So here's where the blades come. They're, they're identical, virtually identical. Of course, it doesn't have that EPD. Yes, EPD coating on the GK the, uh, that the one on the OK4 has. So it doesn't have that protective coating. Remember, these are carbon steel knives, so having that is a nice thing to have. But the blade is so much more finished, and I don't want to say polished because that's going to give the wrong impression, much more attention to detail on this. It has that sharpened spine, unlike the unfinished spine on the GK. Something else I pointed was towards the tip, this was ground a little bit off on one side. It's functionally, it's just fine. It's just one of those things you look at and say, oh man, you know, not this one. This one, they, they took the time to ensure that the tip grind was the same on both sides because again, you're paying a little bit more for this knife. You want it to look a little nicer. So blades are identical, but the handles are different. Look at this. Let's see if I can show this again. Once again, the GK has the much bigger handle than does the OK4. However, having said that, the Santa Prim or rubberized grip on this provides traction that is altogether different than it is for the little Craftsman, the orange one. Much easier to hold on to. And you do want that if your hands are wet or cold or you're tired or maybe, you know, have arthritic hands. I'm getting to that point myself. So I like bigger grips or grips that have some texture on it like this that make it a little easier to hold on to. Okay. I've given you the specifications for this knife. I've compared it with the Craftsman and the Heavy Duty GK. 
Now it's time to see how it performs. All right, quickly we'll go through a series of regular demonstrations I do with bushcraft knives that cover all the basics. And the first one is batoning. Yes, this is a hidden tang or partial tang knife, although it's most of the way back. Traditional wisdom is, is you don't baton a knife like that for fear of breaking it. Well, let me tell you, you're not going to break this knife by batoning it. There is, uh, you know, it's just not going to happen unless you've gone way in over your head and you've chosen too big a piece of wood that's full of knots, then, well, you probably shouldn't be batoning that anyway. But if you stay within reason, and this is an inch, inch and a quarter maple, this is going to be well within its capabilities because it can span it and what is it about 10 inches in length. I had absolutely no question that this would occur. So what I'm going to do is just finish splitting this out so that I can do some more demonstrations with each of the quarters. All right, next demonstration is working on a tent peg, and tent peg involves a couple of skills. First off is notching, and the notch that I want to create is an L7 notch. Uh, quite often I'll baton, baton the uh, cut, stop cut in, but I think with this knife, uh, I can probably do it. Let's do it out here where I get a little bit of room. You're not seeing that. All right, sorry. And I can just do this by forcing and rocking the knife down a little bit. No more than two-thirds of the way through the knife, of course. And just clean out to down to the stop cut. And lots of bite went well below the stop cut. Yep, okay, so there is the notch on my tent peg intended to hold the guideline. Still got to put a point on the other end, though. So again, putting it point on a tent peg is not a difficult task, but what I'm demonstrating here is just how comfortable is it to use in the reverse grip. Uh, that can be challenging with some knives, especially with my extra large hands, and I expect this one is not going to be perfect in that you can see where the beak or the hook down by the pommel, where it rests in my hands, is right in the meat of the palm here. So for this demonstration, not an issue, but if I was doing a lot of this, that would start to create a hot spot there. But the, we want to see how well the knife cuts in as well as how comfortable it is in the chest lever position. So I think I'm finished. Yep, <laughs> that's how. All right, that bit in, I'd say plenty easy. And of course, there was no hot spots from just a few stripes like that, but I can feel it. And I know that over time, it would start to give me some discomfort there. All right, so we've done three demonstrations. Time to do some feather sticking. All right, some fairly straight grain maple. There are some waves in it. Looks, looks like might have been a knot here, but I think I'll work in this direction anyway. So this is one of the splits from that round that I had. A little bit of heartwood in the center, but you want to work where it's driest, and that's where it's driest on this knife. So let's just see what this can do. Certainly bites in a long ways. First curl was bigger than I probably would have normally liked to have made, but it's all right because the first couple are about establishing a stop point for the remainders. And a little bit of more getting a little lighter on my grip so that it doesn't dig in quite so far. Trying to find where the best angle is for this. See if I can get them to curl a little bit better with the... There, yeah, that's a bit better. And maybe this way as well. Yeah, now we're getting some finer curls with more twists in them as well. So the foundation of a feather stick, but we still need some really fine curls. Let's see, ooh, yeah. It's all about getting used to the knife, finding where the edge is. So I have a, some smaller curls here, the kind that We'll take a spark from a ferrocerium rod right down there at the base. So the knife is certainly capable of it. Now, using this over the long term, 
that's something that's going to be up to you and your, your hand. What I found about this just now was that it was better than using the Craftsman because I did not have to hold on to it very tight in order to feel like I'm hold, I still have control over it. And that's because of that Santo Prime grip. So even with my larger than average hands, I was still able to do feather sticking quite comfortably. I just had to remind myself, don't hold on so tight. Don't make your knuckles white to try to keep a hold of the knife. And that's all due to that grip. That's what made it a little bit more a whole lot more fun and a whole lot more controllable doing this all right that's only one of the tasks the last task we'll demonstrate is scraping now I expect this knife is going to do a good job of scraping because it does have the finish edge at least down to here now here off it's kind of funny that it looks like they before they put the coating on they left it in the rough but two-thirds of the spine is nice and sharp so Sometimes coatings can get in the way of scraping, but let's see what it does with this knife. So just this one of those splits. Let's see what it does for creating fuzz. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would say that's doing its job just nicely. Nice little fuzz. Those will catch a spark very easily. Let's just put those aside for a minute. Get out the fat wood. Do a little fat wood scraping. Notice there's a piece here I'm just going to cut off first. And now let's do it. Oh, I'd say that is about as good as any other knife that I have used for this demonstration. Clean the spine off a little bit. Get my ferrocerium rod out. Make sure I've got a clean edge to scrape. There we go, that's better. There we go. Those little fuzzies. And that's the start of a fire. All right, the Hultafors OK4 Bushcraft knife. Um, is it worth the extra money that you're paying for this? Because basically it is the same knife as either the, well, it's a combination of the two. The Craftsman, the handle size, that's exactly right off of the Craftsman. And the blade is exactly off of the GDK. So it's virtually just a combination of those two knives in one, but with product improvements. Sharpened spine, coated blade, Santa Prima on the handle, upgrade to go with the sheath to make it easier to carry on your belt. Is it worth twice the price? Because that's what it is. It's $40, so that's, uh, yeah, it's almost twice the cost of the other knives. Is it worth it? I like it, but I don't think I would purchase this one for myself having now had the GK in my hands, knowing that I can make it virtually the same performing knife, but with a larger handle, which will fit me. However, if you have smaller hands and you're looking for a reasonably compact but still very capable bushcraft knife and don't mind paying the 40 bucks, then this is the knife for you. Quite honestly, this will compete with any more in the lineup. I have a number of them, I have reviewed them, and I have a few more that I'll be bringing to you at some point in the near future. I have full confidence in these Halta 4 knives. They, they, they perform exceptionally well. The only thing is finding the one that fits your hands and your budget. Does this fit my hands? It's a little small. It does it fit my budget. Well, it would if it was a little larger. So what would I really like to have? The GK, the heavy duty GK looking like this. That would be virtually perfect. Are you listening to Hilton Force? Just a little larger than this. That'd be great for me. Okay, that aside. I'll put all the information I have, all the specifications in the video description below, plus the link to Boreal Adventures where this knife was purchased. Again, thank you, Gary, for that little add-on. That was, it is very nice. It's a nice little ferrocerium rod to have with this knife. And uh, yeah, if you have any comments, any questions about the Hultafors OK4, please put them in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.